Trey Morgan. It's the one and only Nick Jonas. And I'm Trey Morgan. Uh, we're here at the Adorama Studio in New York City. You, my friend, are busy. It's been a busy couple weeks. Yeah, uh, your album just came out. Yep. Last year was complicated. Last year was complicated. Uh, it's like birthing an album. That's what I've heard. I've never, I've like, never yeah, given birth. Or... I've never given birth, uh, but I imagine that it, it would be uh, comparable to releasing an album. Um, no, it's been amazing. You know, the response has been incredible, and um, I've I've been able to enjoy it as well, which is it's kind of rare. You know, I, th I think that these times are always so busy that you kind of get lost in the, in the mix. But um, I've taken a couple moments to celebrate and just you know be thrilled that it's out. I listened to the entire album last night. Oh, wow. Thank you. I, I now know what your favorite profane word is. What's that? Well, I, I, can't, I can't say it. Um, but there are two words that you say a lot. And, yeah. And there's the F word. Yep. And then there's the S word. Yeah. I mean, it, you they, guys say, they just it sound really good in songs. And you sing them really well. Consonants. It would be like four Vowel words sounds. later that I'd be like, oh, he just dropped the F word. Yeah. But that one's your favorite. You use that one, I think. Well, sometimes you just need that punch, you know, to get the point across. If you're really passionate about something, you drop the F word. Correct. If something's really terrible, you drop the S word. Yeah. Or and, or if it's fun, like in bacon, for instance, it's kind of. <laughs> You know, I say it there. Bacon was a lot of fun. I love, that's my, that's currently my favorite one. Bacon is. Yeah, just because the response to that one's been pretty incredible. Uh, I really liked Voodoo. I Voodoo, thought that was oh, a, thanks. It was, it was a really, it was almost tribal, it was like, almost like a tribal alternative yeah, sound. Yeah, it's kind of inspired by some of that old, you know, older school hip hop, a little like, you know, late 90s vibe. Um, you know, so it was fun. I worked. I actually did that here in New York City. Did you? Yeah. yeah maybe that's why I like it. I can. I can maybe feel the city. New York in vibes. I can feel the city in it. Yeah. Um, something I found interesting. I was reading up, and the album title. You weren't going to name it. Last year was complicated. No. Whatever. Like, who helped you name the album? Well, I uh, I had a different title picked out. I was going to name it Unhinged, which is one of the songs on the album. And then I I had a meeting with Jay Z, who's now partners with. My manager, Phil McIntyre. You started to say it so, so casual. Then I had a meeting with Jay Z. Like, well, I just, it's confusing if I don't clarify yeah. who it is. Uh, <laughs> but it is cool. I'm That's so lie. cool it's that cool. you, that Jay Z, you had a meeting with Jay Z. Yeah, I mean, and um, he's now a part of sort of the, the, the whole thing. So um, I played him the record and we were, we were talking about, you know, the next steps and everything. And he said, you know, I, I think after hearing the body of work, after I've gotten to know you better, there's a, there's a better better title out there somewhere. And he said, what was this last year of your life like for you? And I said, last year was complicated. And he was like, that's the title. And that's why he's a genius. That's why he's Jay-Z. Like, just ask you one question, named, name the album, and it's yeah. brilliant. Um, what was your favorite song on the album, To Make? To Make? Uh, well, you know, that week here in New York, I was with Jason Evigan, who I did uh, Chains with on the last record. Yeah. And this guy, Dwayne Whitmore, a really talented songwriter friend of mine. Uh, and we... Basically got to New York, started recording at a studio that I love here um, in Chelsea, and just fell into a vibe. So we did Voodoo, um, we did, uh, what was the other one? Um, Comfortable, which I love. That's a good one. And The Difference. And then we recorded Champagne Problems, even though it was written somewhere else. But uh, it was a really productive week and just fun, just to be here in the city and create and vibe out. And Comfortable, I, like, when I was listening to that, I was like, I, I got a little Justin Timberlake vibe from that. Yeah, it's got that vibe a little bit. Yeah. I, I had spent some time in London right before I recorded it and wrote it, so sort of the drum and bass feel was there and yeah. some of the, you know, again, older hip-hop influences and, and things like that. It was fun. And you proved that you can hit the falsetto throughout the album. <laughs> Trying. <laughs> like you, Doing my best. You did it much better than I ever could. Uh, <laughs> definitely. And every time I hear a falsetto on a man, except for Sam Smith, I think Justin Timberlake. Interesting. Because Sam Smith... You his... don't think Frankie Valli first? Well, no. I mean, I'm yeah. not 60. <laughs> but thank you it's for true. thinking it. No, I mean, I, I, I love Frankie Valli. I'm seeing Billy Joel tonight. I'm really excited. At the Garden? Yeah. I saw him last year. Have you, seen, just, have you ever seen him? I've never seen him. I mean, it's going to be like two hours of nonstop hits. It's awesome. Well, I can't wait. Like, you're going to be singing along. You're going to be embarrassed by how much you're singing along. I'm going to... I need like a good night of hearing some live music, so I'm, yeah. I'm excited about it. He's a performer. Um, and at his age, to see him... Like an hour and a half in, yeah, still banging on the keys, still hitting the high notes. Like it's, it's awesome. It's incredible. One of my favorite shows of all time. That's cool. Um, let's talk about let's talk about something else. Let's look at, over at Facebook. Boom. You want to answer a couple of fan questions? Let's do it. Is that all right? Um, Melissa Gomez. Hi, Melissa. Hello. Uh, she says, "Will there be an up 
close and personal event. I think that's for us. With, with Nick, um, maybe in the future, um, if he's not too busy to come back. Well, we're back in town for the tour July 8th or 9th, so, uh, so maybe we're trying like, to work something out for that. If we can work out the schedule, maybe we'll have him back, and he'll, maybe he'll perform in this, in this the Adorama Theater. Um, all right, this one's actually cute. Melissa Rivera, it's her 21st birthday. Happy birthday. And she said it'd be everything to get a B-Day wish from you, Nick. There you go. Happy birthday. Make sure you got your friends with you on your 21st so that you don't get too drunk. <laughs> and if you do, they'll have you back. You're fine. Yeah, then you have plenty of people around. I don't know who this one's for, but uh, Beth and Knight says, I love you. That could be for either one I of us. I think it's for you. Probably, yeah. I'm definitely going to go I'm thinking it's me. for you. Definitely going to go with me. Uh, so keep on sending in your comments. We'll read some of them out. I wanted to talk to you about the, uh, the vigil in New York City that you spoke at. Yeah. Why was that so important for you to be there and to speak? Uh, you know, the LGBT community has been so supportive of me for, for so long. And, and um, you know, I, I was immersed in the, the Broadway community here at an early age and made a lot of really close friends. You were like seven when you started, right? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, so it's a, it's a part of my world in a big way. And uh, obviously I woke up to the news like yeah. everyone else did and, and was heartbroken and uh, just, you know, was aware that the vigil was happening and, and asked to be a part of it in any way I could to, to show my support. And, um, I was asked to speak, and, and I just spoke from the heart, and just you know tried to, you know, say whatever I could that would help in any way, and, and um, you know it's obviously a, a terrible tragedy and, and really so horrible, um, and I think you know it was a powerful night, and um, you know I, I was honored to be there, and hope we see some change in the country so that uh, things like this don't happen. I mean, definitely. There's one thing that I find admirable about. Um, you and Demi is that both of you are so willing to to speak your minds about social and political issues that that affect you guys. Has that always been something for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that you know, there's this thing you have to sort of sort out for yourself, which is uh, you, you have a platform, and it's important to speak about things that you're passionate about and and that you want your fans to be aware of. Um, you know, but also I'm aware that. Uh, you can't always make everybody happy, you know, and, and there's, a, there's a balance of that. And uh, with some of these bold statements where you're, you're trying to see great change or just trying to influence world change in some way, uh, you know, there, there's a part of that that can be complicated. But uh, I really admire Demi for it and what she's done on all her different platforms, speaking out and being open about things. And um, I think I, I, I am trying to do that myself and grow in that way. And, um, you know, it's, it's a good thing. I, I, I don't take the responsibility of that platform lightly. And, um, when I can speak up, I, I think it's important. And you say you can't make everybody happy, and uh, I wasn't going to bring this up, but you said that line. Uh, there's been a little backlash on the internet after you speaking at the visual, which I think is insane because... Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's insane as well. And um, it's mostly because you're, you're heterosexual, because you're straight, and there are some parts of the LGBT community that are saying, why is he here? He's, he's not one of us, but... Yeah. I've okay. heard you say it, we're all people. We're all people. Wow, we all deserve love, and, and we're all equal. You know, and that's the key. Stonewall is, is literally, that's what it was built on. Um, and so for ignorance on, on that level, it's, it's, it's kind of astonishing to me. Yeah. Uh, but again, I'm aware of the fact that you can't make everyone happy. And the, the, the good change from uh, situations like this are, are what you need to focus on. You know, and um, I, I think that I'm humbly uh, in a spot where I'm able to speak and... and, and and share what I can in moments of, of real tragedy that will hopefully bring some encouragement and light to a really dark situation. Uh, and, and that's where I, I keep my focus. Do you read the bad press? Uh, not, I mean, about like things like that, no. But I mean, reviews and stuff of the album, I'll read it and, yeah. and I'll like get into it. Uh, but there hasn't been a, a lot of bad press about the album, which is amazing. So, no, the album's fantastic. That's incredible. I'm, I'm so excited about it. And, you know, that's the focus. Uh, you and Demi did carpool karaoke recently. Yes. <laughs> it looked like the most fun day ever. It was so fun. Um, How long does it take to shoot a carpool karaoke? Uh, it takes about two hours. And it's hot. The car's really hot. Because uh, you can't have the AC on because it'll make the mic sound crazy. Of course. Uh, so we were sweating our asses off, but it was fun. <laughs> did, uh, did the car smell like a new car? Did it smell like hamburgers and no, french fries? No, it smelled like a, a car that's been lived in, but not like hamburgers and french fries. More just like a... A, a regular car smell. Yeah. Uh, will you perform? This is from Isabella Martinez Luna. 
She says, you're going to perform Unhinged during the Future Now tour. I really love the song and would be amazing to watch you perform it in San Jose this August. Nice. Uh, Unhinged is one of my favorite songs in the album. Uh, I, I think I will. Um, it, it feels like it'd be a good moment that would translate live well. Uh, and, you know, might even be a good moment because what Demi and I are doing is, is creating a, a night of music. It's not my set and her set. It's, it's a continuous show. Uh, so, you know, it could be something where Unhinged rolls right into Stone Cold and it's kind of a nice moment there. So we'll see what happens. Putting the show together in the next couple weeks. Look, she just helped. She just helped with the set list. Thank you. That's pretty awesome. Nice. Thanks for your help. Um, your oh, by the way, your brother happens to be in a pretty popular band right now yes, too. Yes, it's awesome. Um, do you and Joe are you guys competitive at all? I mean, naturally you're competitive with your siblings, yeah. uh, but not really on the music front. You know, we, we kind of keep those separate. I mean, sports and stuff, yeah, for sure. But we we are roommates. Uh, we just bought a house together in L.A., and we, you know, we were never there, but. We do have a place, and uh, he actually came out uh, yesterday, I guess, but it was the night before, Wednesday night. He had a show in, in Houston, got right on the plane, came out for my album release party, which was really nice. That's awesome. And uh, hung yesterday. It was, it was great. What's, uh, what's Kevin up to? Kevin's killing it. He, uh, what's he I've been, I've been... part of an app development company that's doing very well. Shut up. Yeah. Really? And, yeah, and like a marketing thing. And, and then uh, on top of that, he's building homes, and he's making babies, so. Hold on. Yeah. So, like, he just completely left music. Yeah. He was like, I'm done with this. You guys do it. Yeah. That's and insane. He's, and he's killing it. That's incredible. Does everybody know this? Or do uh, I, am I, I the only one who doesn't know this? I don't know, know if, if everybody knows that or not. I mean, I, I, he's kept a pretty low profile. Um, An app development company. Yeah. What he's, apps? He's do you know happy. any of the apps that they've developed? We they've, know they've had a few that have gone like right to number one, like games, you know, lifestyle apps. Uh, one of the, my favorite ones is Cubed, and then they have this one called Trump's Wall, which you should check out. It did very well. Trump's Wall? Yeah. Like Donald Trump's Wall? Yeah. You build basically like build the wall. And then it's, oh, I love it. It's, it's a satire, so yeah. don't think that he, you know, it's, but it's very, it's funny, and, and uh, it, you know, it was like number one on iTunes for me. All right, so download uh, Trump's Wall. It's on both, right? Mm -hmm. Both Droid and uh, yep. and iOS. All right. Uh, when's the? Oh man, sorry, Sarah Alexander. When is the next music video you made coming out? Uh, very soon. We're actually finishing today. Finishing the video today, uh, and hopefully within the next week or two it'll be out. But it's for Voodoo, actually. Oh really? Yeah. That's the next video. Well, we just we kind of made a video for most of the songs on the record, which I, I felt was really important um, that the, there'd be visuals for everything. Because when I hear music, I think in a really visual way, and, and wanted to translate that into the music. And so that's what I, I've been doing. Is Voodoo half as sexy of a video as Close was? Voodoo is basically the concept of the video is me and my friends down in uh, New Orleans having a night oh, kind of out in New Orleans, and then. We released the bacon video, and what happens is the voodoo video will run seamlessly into it, so you could watch them back to back. People do that, yeah. yeah, it's cool. Um, but it was a really fun night. We had like, a, you know, a march down Bourbon Street and with a huge marching band and people. It was really fun. I mean, that's stuff that that normal people like me don't get to experience. That must. That's, I mean, that's, I experience it, but it's not something that happens all the time. It was yeah. really special in that moment, and I was I was so thrilled. I mean, New Orleans is such a great city. And uh, I shot Screen Queens there and had some time to get familiar with a few places. So, uh, you know, I felt like I knew kind of where to go and what to do was fun. You're going to start acting more, from what I understand. Yeah, I mean, I, I do a show called Kingdom, which uh, is in its third season now. Uh, been an amazing um, project to be a part of. And then uh, I was filmed Goat, which um, was at Sundance. Got a really yeah. great reception in, in Berlin Film Festival. Uh, you know, so that and then more stuff coming up since those projects have been well received. Is there an actor working right now that you would like to emulate their acting career? Well, I think, you know, it's, it's a balance of uh, the dramatic stuff, because all the stuff I've done, you know, or most of the stuff I've done is, is pretty dramatic, except for Scream Queens, yeah, which was uh, very funny. funny. Yeah. Um, but I, I like the comedy a lot. You know, I'm, I'm more drawn to kind of dark comedy in that vibe. So, um, you know, I think someone that, that balances both. Yeah. Um, the dramatic stuff and, and the comedy. So I think Channing Tatum is actually someone that's done a good job of kind of being able to do both. Mark Wahlberg, obviously. Even Matt Damon, that kind of zone. Yeah, did you see, uh, what was it, uh, what was the name of that movie? Life on Mars, the, where is on Mars? The Martian. The Martian, yeah. Yeah, it was Life awesome. on Mars. He Life on it. Mars is like a TV show. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe yeah. sci-fi show? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's go back to some more 
Facebook Live questions. Sorry, uh, Melissa, your name is Melanie. So, sorry about that. Um, Nick, I love all of your recent interviews. Fallon was hilarious. Thank you. Uh, have you thought of doing some sort of regular online update while you're away on tour, some sort of like vlog or vlog. something? Well, I'm doing a documentary series with Tidal. Um, and we've released two episodes. The third one's coming out, I think, today. Or next, I, don't, I don't know what it is. But it's basically, uh, it is kind of that. It gives people a better look at kind of the journey of releasing the record, making the record. Um, I've actually learned a lot about myself from making this thing. And uh, I think it's opened me up a lot, which is maybe why she's calling out some of the more recent interviews just because I've been able to feel more free and, and kind of have fun with it, you know. It doesn't all need to be serious all the time. You can have some fun. You can goof around. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's been great. So check that out. It's kind of what you're talking about. Uh, it's not me with like a, a vlog and you yeah. know, that kind of vibe, but yeah. I don't know that I'd be too good at that. Um, now, is it it's exclusively on Tidal? So yeah, but it, well, for, for a week it's on Tidal and then it comes out on, on, on my Vivo page. Oh, so, okay, so, that's, you know. so it's accessible to everybody. Yes. Uh, I also saw, saw that you're gonna, you might stop making albums. Yeah, well, I said this yesterday in uh, an interview just because I, I think, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing right now. It was an interesting time in music where uh, it's evolving in such a big way. And uh, the traditional album models is kind of getting lost for a lot of people. Uh, I mean, f even for me, I'm, I'm, I'm streaming more and, and uh, I'm, I'm pulling some of my favorite tracks from an album, putting it on a playlist and doing that kind of thing. And uh, you look at people like Drake or, or even Calvin Harris who have been really smart about just putting out singles keeping things alive and exciting uh, and not being tied to this is the single for the album because that old structure doesn't really exist. So the, the point I made was that uh, you know, this may be my last traditional album release and I might just go to a different model that makes more sense for where I want to go as an artist which could be, you know, again, I don't know, 12 singles over 12 to 18 months and just kind of do it that way. Um, plus, you know, I could pair a visual with each one. You know, there's, there's so much more you can do and uh, being on the forefront of that evolution I think would be fun. And it ends up giving you a little bit more time and freedom if you're not trying to meet the deadline of putting out a 12-song album. Yeah, for you know, sure. You can sit down and, like, I'm working on this song, these visuals, have it all tied together and really make sense for you, then yeah. work on the next project. Totally. So, yeah. When I first read the, the headline, it scared me because I thought you were retiring. No, I but should have said, said that. That would have yeah. traveled. Yeah, I'm retiring from music. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's go back to Facebook Live. We can take a few more questions. Um... Abby, I hope you understood the answer she's put. You're going to stop making albums, sad face. No. So, lots no. More, that says to me lots more music. But lots just more music. Less, you know, CDs. Um, all right, let's see what we got. Nick, love you. Now it's just going to be a parade of Nick, love you. This is what, this is what we're going to well. get now. Much love. Um, let's see. Uh, how much more time do we have? Five minutes? Okay, uh, I want to try something with you, okay. if, you're, if you're game, because you said that we can talk about anything we want. Yeah. So, um, I want to do something called fact or fiction with you. Okay, let's do it. So, all you have to do, here's all you have to do. You have to tell me one true sentence and one lie, and then our Facebook friends and I will try to figure out which one's the uh, lie. Well, okay. Um, all right. You've got to try to fool them. I'm easy to fool. Okay. I got a pocket knife as a gift when I was nine years old and nearly cut my finger off with it by accident. All right. And what's the other one? I broke my knee skateboarding when I was 12 years old. All right, so pocket knife, pocket knife or skateboarding? Yeah. All right, which, which, one is, which one's the lie, Facebook? They're totally going to know this because they know everything about Probably you. Probably not. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I've ever spoken about the pocket knife. Uh, meanwhile, Jessica... Uh, Harding wants to know if you'll marry her. Um, While we wait on these to come sure. in. Sure. Yeah. I mean, why not? Jasmine says the first one is a fact. Um, I think the first one's a lie, but hang on, we'll see. Lie, skateboard. Skateboard is a lie. Second is a lie. I love you, Nick. I think two is a lie. Everybody thinks that one's a lie. Well, Broken they're, knee they're is correct. a lie. They're correct. The first one's real. The first one's real. You Back. almost chopped off your finger? Yeah. You with a pocket knife? Right there. Like, kind oh, of, wow. yeah. Who's it a gift from? Uh, from friends from Switzerland. They came to see me in a Broadway show. <laughs> uh, they gave a nine-year-old a pocket knife, which is probably not the smartest idea in the world. I was playing around with it, and, and my mom was, took it away from me. She was like, you're going to cut yourself. And I was like, whatever. You know? So she put it in her drawer. 
I went and grabbed it out of a drawer. Walked outside to like show off to a friend, took an apple, and was like, check this out, cut through it. But I kept going and it, it literally was just hanging. Hanging, it was that like, severe. It was the bone, the whole thing. Wow, that's disgusting. It's really disgusting. But actually, it ended up helping because this is, you know, I use this finger when I play guitar. And so you don't and feel I can't the tip as feel. much? Yeah. So when I started playing it first and it was like hurting. Yeah, all your yeah. other fingers hurt, but that yeah, one, this one was fine. It was a bloody stump and you didn't even know. Yeah, I mean, just, I don't feel anything. Else. Really? That's amazing. I don't know how they managed that, but it, was, it went uh, to You wouldn't even know this. See the end of the scars there? Yeah. You can't see this. We're just having our little. Yeah, we're just pretty, weirdos. Pretty I heavy. just feel really weird looking at your hand. All right, let's take a couple more questions. Quickly ask a question, like a legit question. We know you love Nick. We know. Uh, but let's get a couple of questions that you need to have answered. Shelby says, ewes, at the Ews. story about you. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of love. Thank a lot you guys, of love. But you're so strong for pushing through the pain. That's what one oh, person Oh, wow, thank yeah. you. It's taken me, you know, 15 years. But uh, thank you so much go. for coming. Facebook Live. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having Nick with us. Uh, good luck with the tour. Congrats on the thank album. You. And thanks, buddy. Appreciate it.